Hello and welcome to this 2022 Transform Our World Youth Summit session, Practical Ways to Challenge Power. This session is aimed at 13 to 16 year olds. You can engage and interact with this session by using the Slido function on your screens. A member of the Transform Our World team is on hand to answer any questions in the chat that you might have. I will now pass over to Henry from Green Schools Project who will host this session today. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Transform Our World Youth Summit. My name is Henry Greenwood and I will be hosting today's session, Practical Ways to Challenge Power. Firstly, to introduce myself properly, as I said, my name is Henry Greenwood uh, and I was a secondary school maths teacher for a number of years and at one of the schools developed the role of sustainability coordinator where, we, uh, where I worked with a, a group of students at the school to do a range of environmental projects, such as energy saving, encouraging walking and cycling to school, installing solar panels and reducing food waste. So from that experience, I started an organisation called Green Schools Project. To start off with, we, we worked with schools to support them to set up and run eco teams in a similar way to, to that, that I have done. And in the last couple of years, we've actually moved towards an, an, a new program, which is called Zero Carbon Schools. And it's a program which is based around uh, a series of pupil sessions, which run throughout the year, where pupils explore what climate change is and the impacts it has around the world. Then they investigate their school's carbon footprint. Then they design and lead projects which act to uh, try to reduce the school's carbon footprint and then use that experience to inspire other people to, to, to help reduce carbon emissions to tackle this huge global challenge of climate change. If you'd like your school to run the programme, please do look us up and, and get in touch. Anyway, let's uh, move on with the session and look at what we're going to explore today. So what are the outcomes for today's session? Firstly, we're going to explore what power you hold and what your sphere of influence is. We're going to look at providing ideas of how to influence people in the positions of power. And then at the end, we're going to do it, enable you to, to run a short task where you create an action plan for one idea to challenge power to bring about positive change. So first of all, where, where do I hold power? So this is your sphere of influence and it starts on a, a very basic level as you as you as an individual. So obviously you have power as an individual over your actions and what you do. Uh, hopefully you use those mostly for, for, for positive, um, positive things. Moving on to kind of slightly broader in, in your family. Everyone in, the, in your family holds a certain amount of power probably most hold, held by your parents or carer, uh, carers, but you can influence them, obviously, by the way that you act and, and the things that you ask for. In our circle of friends, it's, we, we don't like kind of thinking about power within a circle of friends. Hopefully that's a very equal thing that, 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 that people share within, within their circle of friends, but you certainly have influence over, over the people that you hang out with and that are your friends. And then moving on to a bigger scale, and these are the ones that we're actually going to explore in this session. You hold power within your school, but there are obviously people in positions of power, uh, greater power than you in your school, also in your local community. And then we're going to consider the whole country of, of the UK. So we're going to look at how you can use your influence over the people who hold power in those places. OK, so. First of all, we're going to look at how to uh, how you can challenge power at school. So I've got a few examples on, on the screen of, of different groups of people who, who hold some power at school. Some you might consider have, have more power than others. But there's a, just a, a few examples. So you've got your the school eco team, if your school has one. The student council, most schools have groups of students who come together to discuss ideas and, and, and try to put them in place. Uh, some are more effective than others, um, so you can consider whether that's the best option. But uh, in, in, in a lot of cases, the, the, the people with power in the school are certain members of staff. 
Um, so the head teacher is the obvious one. It might be the senior leadership team. So the deputy or assistant head teachers, heads of year hold you know reasonable amount of power within the school. Or it might be specific members of staff, such as the school business manager or the site manager. But any, all of your teachers hold a certain amount of power in the school. So if you have an idea to make your school a better place, how are you going to actually make that happen? And it might be a case of you know, finding the, the appropriate person or group of people um, who have the power to do it. So I'm going to, going to um, illustrate this with, with an example. And the, the example of what I want to pick is, is um, installing solar panels at your school. So your school might already have solar panels, in which case that's great. But lots and lots of um, the majority of schools don't have solar panels. Uh, and I think every school in the country should have solar panels. It's a bit of, to, to me, it's a bit of a no brainer, really. They generate renewable electricity. They are, the schools use um, electricity at the times when um, uh, the sun is out. So, so they can use them directly. Often solar panels at home make less sense because we use a lot of our electricity at home uh, when it's when it's dark in, in the in the evenings but schools use their electricity during the day when the sun is out and shining um, so that so they're good places um, to, to have solar panels it's also cheaper than than um, electricity that we get from from the national grid particularly with the price rises that have happened recently and there are ways to get solar panels that that um, don't actually cost the schools any money if you if you're keen to explore this a, a great place to start is an, a, a website of, of an organization called solar for schools and you can actually type in your school's location uh, and it will give you an estimate of of the the size of the solar panel system that you could put up in the school, how much carbon savings you'll make um, and how much it will save the school in, in money as well. Anyway, if that is something that you would like to do, how would you actually go about making it happen? So obviously it's not something that you can do as an individual, okay? Your, your power doesn't extend to putting up solar panels in, in a school. But your first port of call might be um, the school eco team. If, if it has one, if it doesn't have one, make an eco team, get a group of students together, speak to a teacher and, and, and try and try and form one. But if your school already has an eco team, that could be a, a really good project for them. As I mentioned, one thing that they, they would need to do a bit of research about it. So using the, the website that I mentioned, kind of try and maybe trying to look on Google Earth to, or Google Maps to see uh, which roofs might um, have be the best ones for, for um, installing solar panels generally flat, flat roofs are good um, if they're not flat then um, having them south facing is, is is good you could do so you could do a little bit of research on that if your school doesn't have an eco team is it this, um, the student council um, that you could go to to see if they could kind of get behind this idea uh, and take it to the right people um, but eventually you're going to have to go to some staff members about this it might be the site manager would be a good person to, to speak to. Um, you might not even know whether your school has solar panels or not. So if you speak to the site manager, they will know uh, whether they do or not. Uh, and they might be able to help you about ideas about where the solar panels could, could be put. The school business manager is another person that, that, that will need to be involved at some point um, with this. So have, have they thought about it? And do they know about the, the different options that schools have? Often people, school business managers will, will immediately say, oh, it's too expensive. You know, we can't afford to buy solar panels. Um, but as I mentioned, schools don't actually have to buy the solar panels themselves. You could, that the school could do some fundraising to, to, to buy them. But actually the best way of doing it for schools is a method that actually doesn't cost any money. And then the, um, the upfront payment is, sorry, the upfront cost is paid back through the life of the solar panels and the electricity payments that, that are, are generated through it. And as I say, it's still less than the, what the school would pay for its electricity normally. But eventually, you're, again, you're going you're gonna to need to go to see um, the head teacher or, or um, a senior teacher. And you might want to go to them directly. You might want to go to another teacher first to talk, them, to, to, talk to them about it. 
and use them to, to help you um, get the message across. But just thinking of a, a school that, that Green Schools Project has worked with in, in the last um, couple of years, it was a group of um, a group of students initially who came up with the idea. They did their research through through Solar for Schools. They organised a meeting with uh, the head teacher and the business manager, talked through their ideas, and then they got them. They, they agreed in principle to to this taking place. And then it went to the to the business manager to actually start making the inquiries with with a couple of different organisations to to make it happen. It's it's not a very fast process. There are sometimes permissions that need are needed from the local council or from the academy tr- um, trust if you're part of a academy trust chain. So it's something that could can take some time, but. What, what I would say there is that if you've kind of got approval and that they like the idea, just keep pestering them, keep um, going back to speak to them just to see where the, where, where it's got to. And uh, over the course of time, you know, hopefully this, this is something that, that could actually happen in your school and it can be something that can make a big impact to the school's carbon footprint, can save the school money. And as I said, it's just it's a, it's a good it's a great thing for schools to do um, to show that they are um, serious about tackling climate change. So thinking about the, the the people, how to challenge power, it's about getting together as a group and going to speak to those groups of people or particular person that that has holds the power in order to make something like that happen in your school. I've used the example of solar panels, but you can use you you can think of other things that, that you would like to do. Anything that um, brings about positive change in the school, can you challenge power to actually make it happen? So, the next little section is about how to challenge power in your local community. So we've looked at how to challenge power at your school. Now thinking about the the local community, which includes your school but goes beyond that and is, is, is a bit broader. So there's a, a few different avenues that, that you could go down with, with this one. Um, it might be that you're involved with a local youth centre that, that who provide facilities for, for young people. The, you might be involved with a, a religious group. Often religious groups do good work in the community for example, sort of collecting and distributing food or clothing to, to local low-income families. And then the organisation that holds the most power uh, within a local community is the local council. So we'll, we'll have a look at that and just to think about how, how you can influence your, your local council. And, and often in, in your local community, it's uh, I, th- I think more and more these days, you kind of think, oh, things just, just happen and there's no, no nothing that you can do to influence them. But hopefully you will, we'll just look at a couple of ways that you can try to improve things in your local area by challenging in power in, in your local community. So let's focus particularly on, on the local council then. So your local council has control over a number of, of services. They're responsible for, for things like collecting waste and, and recycling and encouraging people to recycle as, as much as po- possible. They put on events for, for the community and they have um, different kind of local facilities. And so, again, going back to the, 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 the um, theme of you thinking of an idea and then putting it into place, often within a local community, you might not have the power to, to make it happen. So what, what do you need to do? So, for example, let's say you've got a local park, but you think it could be better uh, managed and kept. Maybe you want to put more trees in the local park. How would you go about that? Or let's say you, you, you play basketball and you, there's a basketball court in, in the local community, but the, the net is broken or... or there's some damage done to the to the court. Uh, maybe you play football and the goals are, um, are, are broken. Or anyway, just thinking about kind of local sport sporting facilities that, that you think could be improved. 
maybe you want to put on a um, an event for the for for the community and you think it would be a good idea to to be able to close the road these are all things that the local council would be able to do now the best way of of doing that is is just by getting in touch and by writing to them and so there's a there's a, a really useful tool in order to do that and it's based on a website called uh, it's, it's simply called write to them.com and what you need to do is if, if you go on the internet um, you pull up this website write to them.com and you just put in your postcode and once you put in your postcode um, it will give you a list of all the people in your community that hold hold political positions and those are often the people who hold power in your community so and and the the top one should just be your councillors so you can click on your councillor um, and you can write an email to them and when you when you write an email to them um, keep it simple keep it brief keep it positive and it's very very likely that you should get a, a response from them because they're you know that's that's part of their job is to kind of receive correspondence from people who live within their community uh, and 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 kind of yeah f follow on from from that so it might not be that they can do exactly what you're asking them to do they might provide you some advice and guidance or or some other people to go to see but it it, it may be that they have the power to actually implement what you're asking for or at least they can take it to the local council and discuss it so yeah encourage you to do that if there's some things that you, you would like to, to do in your local community um, you can challenge power by getting in touch with your local councillor um, and seeing if you can make the action happen so moving on to how to challenge power at a national level so there's a couple of um, different ways that we can challenge power at a national level. And, and a national level is, is often the, the, the level where we kind of most consider power to be held around the country. And we're going to look at businesses and government. To, to, so to start off with, businesses and companies hold huge power. Um, the UK economy is built around companies that make and sell stuff to us. Some of those companies are ethical and environmentally responsible, uh, but some are highly polluting and can be damaging to the environment. So what can we do to try to encourage them to be more ethical and, and environmentally responsible? Well, mostly the, 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 the companies all care about profits. So that's what companies are, are set up to do. They're set up to, to sell things um, so, and, and to create profit, which then goes to their shareholders. And the way that they do that is, is by providing things that we, that we value as consumers. And that is, and so how can we challenge their power to be used in a more ethical way um, that supports carbon emission reductions uh, and a move towards a more sustainable society? So principally, the, the, the way that you can do this is through your power of choice as a consumer to buy or not to buy things and encouraging other people, as we mentioned before, encouraging your family to, to buy certain things or not to buy certain things and your friends as well. So you have an influence over, over a, a variety of people um, to use that consumer choice wisely. So let's look at a, a quick example then. And the example of clothes. So when you're thinking about buying clothes, do you always buy new clothes? Or do you sometimes buy secondhand clothes or clothes from a charity shop? And, and, and have you even considered the, the, the carbon footprint or the environmental impact of your clothes? Well, actually, I mean, fashion and clothes, the fast fashion industry in particular, creates about 10% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. So it has a huge impact on, on climate change. And if you rarely kind of buy new clothes, it can make a big, big difference. So, so think about the, the choices that you have. So fast fashion companies uh, often change their, the, um, their items um, and the styles quickly to encourage people to, to buy more, more things. And, and often people will just wear a, 
an item of clothing a, a few times um, before throwing it away and then going and buying buying something new. And often they do this because the, the, the cost of those items are, are quite low. Their uh, production and development are in countries where people are paid low wages and the, the farming process that, that are used to, to create those items are done in a way that doesn't doesn't kind of help or protect the environment. So are you comfortable with that? And is that OK? Or are, or are you going to think about doing it a different way? So and one way of, of tackling that is that there are um, you could buy clothes which cost a bit more, are made better and will last longer. But equally, as I said, the, 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 there is an alternative that, that doesn't cost much money by either buying second hand uh, or from a charity shop. Another thing that you could do in school is create a, a clothes swap. So people who have clothes that they have either grown out of, but they're still in good condition or that they just don't kind of wear anymore. Uh, you could bring those into school, swap those with other people who, who actually want those items and then you're reusing them for uh, and, and making them last longer. So as I said, that, that can make a big difference by using your, your power of choice as a consumer. Another example could be uh, on food. So hopefully you know what, what, um, that the, the food creates carbon emissions and contributes to, to climate change, but the types of food that create the most carbon emissions and contribute the most are, are generally animal products, so meat and dairy products. But as people have realised this more and more in the past kind of few years, five years, ten years, there are more and more alternatives to meat that are coming onto the market. So companies are responding to this this demand that people have. Previously, it was generally a bit more expensive to, to buy those items, but actually the price of meat and dairy products are going up. Whereas those kind of products, because there's more of them and there's more choice, those prices are actually coming down to where, for example, milk now, it's often more expensive to buy dairy milk than it is to buy a, a, a dairy-free alternative. So you can use your, your, your choices to, to influence uh, the way that companies operate and, 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 and kind of build on that momentum. So beyond... The power your your power as a consumer what else could you do well if you you know if you have a real kind of problem with with one company and the way that it does things particularly you could just kind of run run a little kind of individual campaign you could find their a contact address um, on their website and contact someone in, in the organization and write to them um, and and explain to them what 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 the problem what you think the problem is as a young person, actually, your voice might be listened to more for reasons I'll, I'm going to explain in the next section. Or you can join in with some collective campaigning. A great example of that has been the use of plastic at supermarkets. There's been lots of awareness about how, pl how damaging plastic is to, um, to the environment, particularly when it gets into the oceans and, and our seas. So there's been lots of campaigns about reducing plastic at supermarkets. I personally think it's crazy how much plastic, uh, sorry, how much fruit and vegetables are wrapped in plastic. And it's, it's very unnecessary. So one thing that people have done is just take off all the plastic packaging for the fruit and vegetables that they buy and just kind of leave it at the supermarket. And you could get a group of people together and do something like that. Don't just kind of dump it on the floor. But I think if you if you make a big deal about it and, and speak to the 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 people at the supermarkets try and find a manager and explain to them why you're doing this it can have a big impact and lots of the major supermarkets have introduced targets of, of reducing plastic packaging it's still not good enough but at least it's a start and it's a way that people have challenged power of the, the big businesses like supermarkets so lastly looking at the government then and this is where people kind of traditionally think of as as power as where power lies the recent events have, have shown it can be fairly chaotic and you know a lot of people are fairly disillusioned with the people uh, in power uh, at the moment but it is it is where a lot of the important decisions are made around over the country 
So the government runs our education system, for example, and kind of the way that schools operate and the funding that schools get. Policing, um, it also, it looks after healthcare. So our hospitals, our doctors, again, deciding how much funding they get and so on. And the way that it does that is by deciding on, on taxes and how much different kind of people or companies pay to the government to, to support all of these public services, uh, including kind of benefits to, to support low income families and the army and the armed forces and, and, and lots and lots of different things that, that the government um, controls. So thinking about climate change, the government introduced a law to get to zero carbon emissions by 2050. But a lot of scientists and, and, and people consider that 2050 is too late to avoid the wor worst effects of, of climate change. And it's a responsibility of developed countries like the UK to reduce their uh, carbon emissions faster. So how can we influence power at a governmental, at a national level? We're going to look at examples around climate change and the environment, uh, but you can think of these in in you, you could do this in, in any area that the government has control of, uh, such as the ones that I've mentioned. So I think the, the best example of influencing power, and particularly the best example of young people influencing power, was just a, a few years ago in, in 2019, where there was a big movement. Um, it was a, a global movement, actually, started very initially by, by Greta Thunberg in Sweden. but it, to, really took off in the UK and in lots of countries around the world, where in the UK, tens of thousands of stu um, school students actually went on strike from school once a month for a certain period of time to basically make their voices heard and to campaign about the fact that the UK government was just not doing enough to tackle climate change. And the, the fact that it was a lot of young people uh, striking from school this is that that's something that 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 you know school students haven't done on uh, about other issues in the past and and the the you know the main reason for that is because young people you know will live through all the consequences of the climate crisis but have no responsibility for for causing it so your voices are are really powerful in in this respect and it made a big difference to the attitudes of politicians at Green Schools Project, we ran a conference uh, that summer and invited a member of the, the London Assembly called Caroline Russell, who's of, of the Green Party. And she said, because as a member of the Green Party, she was campaigning on, on, on some of these issues. She basically said to a lot of young people who were assembled, thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in changing people's attitudes and opinions. And actually... Not, not long after the, some of the school strikes, the UK Parliament declared a climate emergency and lots of councils around the country, um, so thinking about local power, the local councils uh, declared climate emergencies and started to develop action plans on how to actually get to uh, net zero carbon emissions. And lots of councils have set targets um, well ahead of the 2050 target that the government has set. Um, but on a national level, it's it's kind of widely accepted and that the government is doing it isn't doing enough and it's not on track to meet even the targets that it's set. And those targets are probably not strong enough. So we need to keep up the pressure. And, it, and young people have a crucial role in that because of the reasons that, that, that I mentioned, um, that your voices are, are powerful because you haven't caused the problem, um, but yet we'll have to live through all of the consequences of it. So how are we going to do that? There are, there, there are, there are you know, it, it's not just about kind of striking from school, that's, that's been done, that there are other ways to, to do that too. So there are national campaigns, for example, Greenpeace have run a, a campaign called the, the Big Plastic Count. Plastic is, uh, creates lots of carbon emissions and creates um, environmental problems um, when it kind of goes out into the seas and the oceans, as I've mentioned already. So they did a campaign last year where, and it, it might kind of keep, keep running each year, where people 
in their homes were encouraged to count the, all the different pieces of single use plastic that, that they that they had from from all the things that they bought and then that was put together and put together into a, into a campaign which there was then taken to government um, to try to encourage them to put um, bigger targets on reducing the amount of plastic produced that's just one example but there are lots of national campaigns or on online petitions on things such as stopping fracking happening increasing the amount of renewables reducing the number of cars on our road to improve air, local air pollution so you know a, a quick search on online you'll find all kinds of petitions that you can add your name to or, or that you can you can support so that's that's one way of getting involved through, through national campaigning Another way, which I think is really useful and effective, as I, I mentioned um, in the challenging power at a, a um, local community level, is was writing to your councillor. At a national level, each everybody in the UK has a local MP or member of parliament, and it's their job to to represent you at, at in at in parliament and to the government so if you write to them they are obliged to um, similarly to your councillor they are obliged to respond to you and and to explain either their position on it they might not always agree with you um so it's it's not always gonna gonna going to win but if 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 you present your opinion um it can help influence their opinion and they can also kind of take your opinion um to parliament or, or, or forward it on to the, the relevant person in the government. The way to do that, again, is by using the, the website, writetothem.com. Um, if you just look, at, look that up online, and there are some kind of hints and tips on how to write an effective letter. But basically, if, if you're writing to them on the issue of, of climate change, as I said before, your, your voice is, is, is powerful. If you can give your, your opinion, if you can say a little bit about what you have done in your own life or, you know, in your sphere of influence, thinking about the different groups that I mentioned before, it could be something that you've done with your friends, something that you've done with your family, something that your school has done. If your school has, has um, implemented some, some good actions on reducing carbon emissions, explain that and then say, look at what I have done. What can you do to try and help us with, with this, uh, with this campaign to try to, limit the, uh, the the impact of, of climate change so and and, and as i said the, the, the mps and members of parliament are obliged to reply to you so that can be a really effective way of challenging that power so all of the issues that i've talked about are around climate change and the environment um because this this summit is is coinciding with with the big global um climate summit but you can use the principles that I've mentioned to campaign on, on anything, on any, anything that is important to you, whether that might be anti-poverty or racial equality or any other issues that, that are important to you. But to finish off this session, I'm just going to leave you with a task, because I think it's, it's important that you don't just kind of listen to this, but actually use it as a, a way of in, inspiring you to actually take action. So what are you going to do? I want you to think of which level of power you would like to influence. So you could think very small, like your friends and your family, or you could look at one of the three areas which we've looked at in more detail, your school, your local community, or the UK as, as a nation. Can you think of an idea that will challenge the person or people who hold power in that group to bring about positive change? And it might just be something that you would like to see change in one of those one of those settings. So think of an idea. Often it's good to get together in groups or, or in small groups to, to think about this and, and work together on it. But if you want to work on it yourself, then that's totally fine too. And then I want you to think about how you will actually make it happen. And I want you to think about an idea that is going to be achievable and it's going to make a big make an impact it doesn't have to be a big impact but make some kind of an impact and something that you're going to enjoy doing and seeing the the, the outcomes from so the task is to write a brief action plan for your project it could literally just be a few bullet points or you know a, a little bit of, of writing on on paper 
give your project a name. Think about what are the step-by-step -step actions that you're going to take in order to make that happen. Uh, and it might be something very simple and small, or it might be something bigger that take a, a number of different actions. Think about who is responsible for each action. Are you going to do it all? Or, you, or are, you, are you going to need people to help you? Or are you as a group going to divide out the tasks? And then think about when they, are, how, when they will happen. When you're, when you're thinking about this, I encourage you to get started as, as soon as possible. If you think, oh, this is a nice idea, but I'll do it next year, then it's quite likely that you'll just kind of forget about it and it won't happen. So see if you can get started on the first action uh, today or tomorrow or at the, uh, or the latest next week and actually get start making it happen. And then follow your action plan and let's see what you can come up with. Hopefully this session has, has inspired you to actually take that step and try to challenge power in, in whichever um, form or whichever level you, you, you consider the most important. And yeah, I hope you've got some useful ideas from this and that you can actually put some of these ideas into place. So if you have enjoyed it, and if you are interested in, in, in running a, a, a program by Green Schools Project, our Zero Carbon Schools Program, for example, do get in touch. That's our website, greenschoolsproject.org.uk, or, or have a look at us on, on Twitter. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed the session and, and you enjoy the rest of the sessions at the Youth Climate Summit. Thanks. Thank you so much, Henry, for this really informative session on practical ways to challenge power. You can find out more about the work that Henry does at the Green Schools Project at www.greenschoolsproject.org.uk. As some of you may know, the UK School Sustainability Network is a network of young people from all across the UK who come together to use their power through collective action for good. We asked a member of the network to give us their thoughts on this session and tell us a bit more about what power means to them. Power is typically perceived as being granted to someone by someone else. Power is seen as a position or a title, which comes with a sense of control or authority. However, I think that we do all have power, as power is the influence that someone has over others. When we're talking about the climate crisis, it's really easy to feel powerless. How can we influence the decisions made by CEOs and politicians? I often feel disconnected from politics, and then that leads to a sense of hopelessness. In reality, I think that many people who are traditionally seen as being in power actually feel threatened by young people, and particularly young climate activists. We've all seen the disparaging comments about many activists on social media, which suggest that they are actually challenging the power held by politicians. A simple way to challenge power in society is to discuss media articles, break down the arguments for and against an issue with other people. Often I find that there's more to the story than first meets the eye and it's really important to spread awareness about our problem. By informing those around you, you can help to challenge the spread of myths and misinformation. Another tip I would share is to always look, listen, and learn from other people. There might be topics that you just don't know that much about yet, but if you listen to others, there might be an area where you can contribute. And when it is an area that you are knowledgeable about, take responsibility.